You good to go? Cool. Hey, my name's Tom. I'm an applications engineer from Shaw Distribution UK, and we're here in our Shaw UK huddle room, and I'm now going to talk through the differences between various types of microphones for presentations, meetings, and conference spaces. So firstly, what does a microphone need to pick up? Well, it can pick up two different types of sound. It can pick up signal, and it can pick up noise. We want the signal, but don't want the noise. The best way to get more signal is to place the microphone as close to the sound source as possible. The further the microphone drifts away from the sound source, the less signal you'll pick up and the more noise you'll pick up in the room as well. But as soon as you get back close to the microphone, it sounds much better. So I'm now talking into this handheld microphone and you should be able to hear me really, really quite clearly, again, because it's nice and close to me. It's great for presentations because I can use both hands and gesticulate as I need to. But if I was actually in a, a video conference where I'm talking to some people uh, in a different part of the country or the world, this would not so ideal because I might have other bits of equipment on the desk or like a computer that I need to operate or other bits of paper that I need to shuffle through and suddenly trying to be or use two hands for something with a handheld mic just isn't quite the right thing for it at all. So I've just switched to a lapel microphone from my handheld microphone. The reason for this is it now gives me two hands free to operate stuff, read books, type stuff on my laptop, or if I was doing a presentation it allows me to just be free and natural. This microphone will work really really well in applications when uh, sound reinforcement isn't quite so necessary. You have to be a little bit careful of where and how you place it. Place it too close, you can distort the microphone. Place it too far down the chest and you don't get much level at all. In addition, as I turn my head from side to side to the right and then to the left, you'll probably notice a slight uh, variation in output level. The way to get around that is to use an ear set microphone, the kind that goes around your ear and down to the corner of the mouth. With those kind of microphones, you can turn your head and the microphone will clearly follow your sound source without any change to the sound at all. I've just switched to a boundary microphone. These are really, really good for meeting rooms and conferences. Why? The handheld mic wasn't good because I had to hold it on my hand all the time. The lapel mic was great, but it meant that every person in the room would need to have a lapel mic placed upon them. The boundary mic means that the day can be installed on the table to begin with, and then everyone just comes to the table and sits down and starts the meeting. Boundary microphones require a relatively low amount of interaction with the microphone. What I mean with interaction is the way you use it. They can be installed on the table once, set and forget. The meeting occupants can then come into the room and just start the meeting and talk normally. However, there's still some interaction required. For example, I know that I need to talk straight into the microphone for you guys to hear me clearly. But if I start to lean too close to it, the level gets too high. I start to lean back and the level gets way, way, way lower. If I look towards the back of the room, it's going to be bad as well and uh, move towards the front of the room. It's going to be bad too. What we're getting is less signal and more noise, the thing that we tried to avoid this morning. People in meetings often have stuff on the table. So I might have a piece of paper and I might not realise this is a microphone and might just accidentally put the piece of paper on the microphone, which firstly sends a lump through the system, then it kind of reduces the actual sound that you pick up, and then as it moves around on there as well, it's really not a pleasant sound idea at all. In addition, people often have desktops or computers in these sessions, and while the computer is uh, shut, totally fine. Place the mic in there, open the screen, and all of a sudden you've completely and utterly killed what the microphone is picking up. You can still hear me, but just nowhere near as clearly. So this is a gooseneck microphone, and it's very similar to the boundary microphone in as much as you'll typically install it in a conference room table and largely set and forget it. However, it still requires some of the meeting interaction like we had before, because if I go too close to the microphone, it will get a little bit louder, start to sit back from the microphone and you lose level again, uh, start to towards the talk towards the back of the room and towards the front of the room, and you get more ambient sound or more noise and less actual signal. However, unlike the boundary microphone, we have solved a couple of little issues. Like if I have a piece of paper, it's now way harder for me to ignore this microphone so I can't accidentally dump the piece of paper on top of it. Similarly, with a laptop computer now, uh, I can open up the laptop and the gooseneck happily points over the top of my screen. However, they can be potentially a little bit intimidating. Now, I'm used to speaking into microphones, so I'm used to having uh, the microphone quite close to me. However, lots of people would find, oh, I don't want this microphone here, it's annoying me, it's in my way. So just kind of push it to the side, and then they're much happier. The problem is, no one else can hear what they're talking about. It'd be really good to not have to worry about microphones at all sometimes, because in a meeting, you just want to talk with your fellow uh, colleagues in your local room, 
and on the far end of a video conference call as well. So by having no microphones at the table, we're not listening to this one by the way, but instead we've got one in the ceiling called the ceiling array microphone. This guy has up to eight lobes that can point down to various sections of the room and pick me up. Now I don't have to worry a single bit about how I'm interacting in the room. I can lean forwards, I can lean backwards, I can look to the left, look to the right, and the sound picks me up uh, exactly as it should do. It also helps to cut down the noise in the room due to some onboard processing and allows me to just be entirely natural. I might uh, drop the thing, it's called a gooseneck because it's got a neck like a goose. <laughs>